For over a thousand days, the skies above the Third Reich were stained by the smoke and metal of the combined bomber offensive. On this titanic battlefield, the Allies fielded two legendary four-engine heavy bombers, the American Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress and the British Avro Lancaster. They shared a mission, but they represented two radically different life-and-death philosophies of how to wage war from 25,000 feet. The B-17 was a meticulous armored machine designed to fight its way to the target and back. Its very name, Fortress, was a promise of survival to its 10-man crew. The Lancaster, conversely, was designed for a single purpose, to carry the largest possible payload. It traded armor, guns, and even crew accessibility for destructive capability. In the eyes of a historian, the Lancaster was, by its very design, a target. The strategic divorce began in 1943 with the Casablanca Directive. The goal was simple, complete air superiority over Europe, but the execution was split. RAF Bomber Command, under Air Marshal Sir Arthur Bomber Harris, focused on the nighttime area bombing of German industrial cities. Night offered cover, allowing them to use larger, less maneuverable, and less defended aircraft like the Lancaster. Their goal was de-housing and de-industrialization by volume. The U.S. 8th Army Air Force, USAF, led by Generals Eaker and Spatz, insisted on daylight precision bombing of specific critical targets, oil rainaries, ball-bearing plants, and aircraft factories. They believed in the gospel of the Norden bombsite and the idea that concentrated defensive fire could protect their formations. The B-17, a 1930s design, was built high, long-ranged, and tough to fit the USAAF's doctrine of unescorted deep strikes. The Lancaster, a 1941 evolution of the twin-engine Manchester, was built around a huge, unobstructed bomb bay, a design optimized for the massive blockbuster bombs used in night raids. Let's talk about the hardware that defined the defense. The final production B-17G model bristled with 13.50 caliber M2 Browning heavy machine guns. These were true anti-aircraft weapons. The B-17's famous chin turret was a direct response to the Luftwaffe's devastating tactic of head-on attacks. It was armed for a 360-degree close-range brawl. The Lancaster was comparatively impotent. It typically carried only 8.303 caliber rifle bore machine guns, split between the nose, mid-upper, and tail turrets. The .303 was simply not powerful enough to reliably destroy German fighters in a quick pass. It was a deterrent, not a destroyer. The solution for the B-17 was the combat box formation a masterwork of tactical geometry credited to Colonel Curtis LeMay. By staggering the aircraft across multiple altitudes and positions, the guns of every bomber provided interlocking fire for its neighbors, turning a formation of 36 or more planes into a single, terrifying, heavily armed fortress. The Lancaster had no such tactical luxury at night. Its only defense was the darkness itself, aided by electronic countermeasures like window, chaff, and evasive corkscrew maneuvers. If spotted by a Luftwaffe night fighter equipped with Schrega music, upward firing cannon, the Lancaster was effectively a sitting duck. This is where the fortress truly earned its name, and where the difference in design philosophy became lethal. The B-17 was famously over-engineered with a robust, stressed skin airframe and critical systems redundancy. Its radial engines, specifically the Wright R-1820 Cyclones, 
were air-cooled and could often absorb dozens of hits and continue running. Crucially, the B-17 featured extensive armor plating for the flight crew and self-sealing fuel tanks. The Lancaster, powered by liquid-cooled Rolls-Royce Merlin engines, was more fragile. To accommodate the immense bomb bay, the main wing spar ran through the top of the fuselage, creating an insurmountable barrier. This design choice, while allowing for maximum payload, also made escape nearly impossible. When a B-17 was shot down, records show the crew had a high chance of escape. A bailout success rate of upwards of 50 to 80 percent was achievable. Conversely, for a Lancaster crew and a crippled bomber, escaping through the cramped hatches and past the wing spar, often in darkness, resulted in a tragic bailout success rate of only 15 to 20 percent. The Lancaster saved weight to carry more bombs. The B-17 added weight to save its crew. If the B-17 was the survivor, the Lancaster was the true payload champion. Its 33-foot bomb bay gave it unprecedented capacity. While a B-17's typical mission payload was 4,000 to 8,000 pounds, the Lancaster routinely carried 14,000 pounds. This capacity also made it the exclusive delivery system for the legendary special weapons of the war, including the 12,000-pound tall boy and the 22,000-pound Grand Slam earthquake bombs designed by Sir Barnes Wallace. These were the weapons that destroyed the German battleship Tirpitz and shattered hardened U-boat pens, missions the B-17 could simply not perform. The B-17 had its own altitude advantage. Its sophisticated turbo superchargers allowed it to operate at a service ceiling of over 35,000 feet, significantly higher than the Lancaster's approximate 24,500 feet. This height helped the B-17 fly above most of the dangerous flak and often above the reach of early German fighters. Furthermore, their targeting reflected their doctrine. The B-17's Norden bombsite was a high-altitude computer designed for precision. The RAF's night attacks relied on saturation, guided by early navigation radars like H-2S and the Pathfinder Force. The ultimate impact of the B-17's precision was to draw out and destroy the German fighter force, while the Lancaster's sheer explosive volume delivered the knockout blows to the urban industrial core. By the end of the war, the statistics tell the final, nuanced story. The USAAF produced 12,731 B-17s compared to 7,377 Lancasters. Despite the B-17's legendary toughness, the sheer duration and intensity of the daylight campaign meant that over 4,700 were lost in combat. Yet the B-17's strategic impact was unique. It was the psychological battering ram that forced the Luftwaffe to engage, winning the critical battle for air superiority over Europe. The Lancaster, for all its vulnerability, was a remarkable weapon of efficiency. Its greater payload meant that for every sortie flown, it delivered a higher tonnage to the target at a lower operational cost per pound of payload. The question of which was better is impossible to answer because neither was a competitor. They were a perfect, lethal complement. The B-17 Flying Fortress was the strategically superior aircraft for winning the air war. It sacrificed payload for a legendary degree of ruggedness and firepower, successfully executing the difficult, high-risk daylight mission that ground down German air defenses. It was the ultimate survival platform. The Avro Lancaster was the tactically superior aircraft for winning the War of Destruction,
It sacrificed protection for a massive payload capacity, proving itself capable of delivering the most devastating, specialized ordnance of the war. It was the undisputed payload king. Together, they delivered over a million tons of bombs and defined the two-front air war that ultimately led to Germany's collapse. The B-17's crew stood a far better chance of making it home but the Lancaster's crew carried the true weight of the war. If you were a bombardier flying into the European night, which aircraft would you choose? Tell us in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more deep dive analyses of history's great machines.